The January 14, 2014 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature will now come to order. Will the clerk, will the deputy clerk please call the roll? President Adair? Here. Mr. Ancello? Here. Ms. Andrews? Here. Mr. Baroth? Here. Dr. Carbone? Here. Ms. Boyce? Here. Mr. Colby? Here. Mr. Daniele? Here. Mr. Delahanty? Here. Ms. Dr Mrs. Draw? Here. Mr. Gamble? Miss, Mr. Gamina? Yeah. Mr. Haney? Yeah. Mr. Howland? Yeah. Ms. Cayley? Yeah. Mr. John Lightfoot? Yeah. Mr. Willie Lightfoot? Yeah. Mr. Marinetti? Yeah. Mr. Michike? Yeah. Mr. Morelli? Yeah. Dr. Quattro? Yeah. Ms. Rivera? Yeah. Mr. Rocco? Yeah. Ms. Taylor? Yeah. Mr. Tucciarello? Yeah. Mrs. Valerio is excused? Mr. Wilcox? Yeah. And Mr. Yolovich? Please stay seated at this time. I would like to introduce Reverend John Lonkel of the St. John of the Evangelist Church, who's been invited here tonight by Red Legislator Robert Colby. Thank you very much for the invitation to uh, pray with you this evening. I'd ask you to quiet your hearts for a moment before we pray. As we prepare to begin this meeting, we ask God to bless all those gathered here this evening and the community we serve. We rejoice that we are blessed and called together to represent the people of our county. We pray that we will respond generously to this opportunity to serve the greater good. Inspire us with your spirit of wisdom. Plant seeds of your vision in our hearts and minds. Give us humor and humility in working with one another so that we may know the privilege of participating in the manifestation of your peace and justice in our world. Grant us the willingness to be open to each other, to respect each other, to listen to each other, to be honest with each other, to be supportive of each other, in order to accomplish the work that is before us, not for individual or partisan gain, but for the sake of the common good of the entire community. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Legislator Joe Carbone will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Legislator Carbone. Without objection, we will take agenda item number 21 out of regular agenda order. Madam Clerk. Referral 14-002, election of the Clerk of the Legislature. Second. Moved by Legislator Tutorial, second by Legislator Quattro. Now, the floor is now open for the purpose of nominating a clerk and a deputy clerk for the legislature. I would like to nominate the following slate of candidates. Jamie L. Slocum to serve as Clerk of the Legislature, and Lee Halstead to serve as Deputy Clerk of the Legislature. It is moved by Legislator Tucciarello and seconded by Legislator Quattro. Are there any other nominations from the floor at this time? I now declare the nominations closed, and we will now vote with one single vote for the slate as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations, ladies. <laughs> Jamie, <clears throat> as you sit down to your seat here to make it official, I think, Cheryl, you did this for me, too, when I got president. So here, I'm giving you yours. There you go. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Thank you. At this time, I ask that each of you please stand. Without objection, we will take agenda item number 22 out of agenda order. 
Agenda item number 22 is moved by Mr. Tucherall. It is seconded by Ms. Andrews. Will the clerk please read the resolution and memorial for John W. Andrews, the father of minority leader, Carrie M. Andrews. Expressing regret on the recent passing of John W. Andrews, be it resolved that the Monroe County Legislature hereby expresses its deep sympathy at the recent passing of John W. Andrews of Trumansburg, the beloved father of Carrie M. Andrews, the Democratic minority leader in this honorable body. Whereas John W. Andrews passed away on December 9, 2013, and was the dearly loved husband of Joanne Andrews and loving father to Carrie Andrews, Scott Adair, and Graham Andrews, Ashley Cooper, and brother to Robin Dundon and Mary Jo Camiolo. And whereas John W. Andrews graduated from Greece Arcadia High School before going on to work as an auto technician for Pritchard Automotive for over 25 years, a position which surely allowed his skills at tinkering to flourish. And whereas John W. Andrews was a devoted family man who loved catch and release fishing, nature and gardening, and creating his annual 4th of July fireworks display for his loved ones. And whereas John W. Andrews was deeply cherished by an extended family of relatives and friends who adored his great sense of humor and unconditional love. And whereas John W. Andrews will be long remembered for his love of nature, his passion for nature, and his devotion to family. And be it further resolved that the clerk of the legislature is hereby requested to forward a copy of this resolution to the bereaved family. This resolution was adopted unanimously with each legislator rising in his or her place for a moment of silence. Legislators, you've received a copy of the journal of day 14, December 10th, 2013, and day 15, the special meeting of December the 20th of 2013. Without exception, those journals will stand approved as submitted. There's a hearing loop in place tonight to assist those who are hearing impaired. Anyone requiring assistance should inquire at the clerk's office. If you have a cellular phone, pager, or other electronic devices in your possession, I would request that you make it inaudible for the duration of the meeting. Thank you for your cooperation. Legislators, the referrals for the next uh, cycle have been submitted and are in your folders tonight. At this time, it's my great honor to introduce Mark Quinn from the Monroe County Parks Department, who will let us know tonight about the plant of the month. Mark? And he brought one with him. Yep. Thank you. Good evening. Our plant of the month this month is Cycleman. Um, there's 20 different species of cyclamen, but if you buy one at the local garden store, you'll get this species of different varieties. You can see the colors come anywhere from whites to reds, purples, and pinks. It's an unusual flower in that it likes to flower in the winter, so it makes an ideal house plant, although it doesn't like it particularly warm. So if you keep your house warm and you want a cyclamen, put it in a cool window. This, this plant would prefer to be in temperatures from 50 to 60 degrees. It actually, in its native environment, is a perennial, it grows from a, uh, a bulb-like uh, root. It's actually a tuber, uh, kind of like a potato. So this thing could be held over from year to year, though it's not particularly easy. And they don't do well outside in this environment. It'll freeze. There are ones here that are smaller that actually will uh, naturalize here. And we actually have some growing in front of the conservatory. This plant we actually planted and was grown at the Monroe County Jail at the greenhouses. Uh, these were planted in uh, about June. And it's, they're just now coming into bloom, and they're going to be in the conservatory. In Lamber Lamberton Conservatory, we have a very nice display of them. Um, they can be had at, like I say, a lot of garden stores. What you want to do is give it a lot of light, indirect light, not directly in the sun so that it doesn't burn and as cool as possible. Water it, and then let it go dry, and then water it again. They'll bloom for six to eight weeks, and they're really a nice flower in the, in the winter. Really nice, uh, nice color and very, very cheery. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Happy New Year. Thanks. This evening, we have several proclamations scheduled. Madam Clerk.
Would representatives from the East Ridge Lancers football team please come forward? Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair and legislators Dr. Joe Carbone and Joseph Morelli, Jr. Whereas the East Ridge Lancers football team is a representation of dedication, strength, and courage. After graduating 19 players last year, the team began to work even harder to prove that they still had the talent and the heart to reclaim their title. Each and every player displayed the highest level of focus and commitment to confirm the team's championship-worthy status once again this year. And whereas, led by captains D'Angelo Maraza, Ricky Hagens, and B.J. White, the team kept their spirits high after an early season loss against Victor and used this defeat as a driving force to work and play harder throughout the season. This drive culminated in a 9-2 to season as the team capitalized on their talents both mentally and physically. And whereas the Eastridge Lancers football team reclaimed the Section 5 Class A championship by defeating the Victor Blue Devils behind game MVP Demetrius Lewis's touchdown pass and 104 yards rushing with a 1916 win after an intense battle with a nail biting finish at Salem Stadium. Now, therefore, let it be known that we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, Joseph Morelli, Jr., Legislator, District 17, and Dr. Joe Carbone, Legislator, District 16, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature on this day, January 14, 2014, do hereby recognize the Eastridge Lancers football team for their dedication in reclaiming the Section 5 Class A title. Congratulations. Thank you very much for this honor. I'd like to thank Joe, Dr. Carbone, Mr. Adair um, for this acknowledgement. Um, it was a great season. A lot of times they say repeating is a lot harder than winning it for the first time. Um, actually, this year it was our third time. Um, we won it in 2004. Um, this team was a pretty special team. Um, it took a little bit of time to take on its personality. Um, once we played Victor the first time and the result wasn't as, as good as the last time we played him. Um, after that game, our captains and some of our senior leadership uh, took the team and um, brought them the rest of the way through the season and uh, really took control and uh, created a great personality. So um, we're very proud in East Aronaquay for with this team. And I know uh, this particular team is going to leave a really nice legacy for the future teams in the future. So thanks again. Would Amy Castronova please come forward? Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair and Legislator Joseph Morelli, Jr. Whereas Amy Castronova, CEO of Arondequoit's Novatech Communications, was named the 2013 Business Person of the Year by the Small Business Council of Rochester for businesses with less than 50 employees. And whereas Novatech, a company consisting of just 30 employees, prides itself on technical writing, training, and support systems, and providing complete outsourcing services. The, com the company excels at providing clients with the necessary tools and information for success by contributing to the usability of medical devices with the ultimate goal of improving the lives of others. And whereas, Amy has succeeded in driving the company to achieve even more by expanding its offerings since it was founded in 1989 by her mother. After the passing of her mother in 2001, Amy dedicated herself to learning the workings of the business and eventually purchased the company in 2003 
when she was still only a junior at Clarkson University. And whereas Amy has integrated her knowledge, drive, and dedication to herself and others, extending her mother's legacy at Novatech. She also selflessly encourages other motivated young women to value their abilities and to reach their full leadership potential through her Young Leaders Program. Amy is a prime example of how hard work and dedication to others truly does pay off in the end, of the, in the end and is an asset to the Rondecoit community. Now, therefore, let it be known that we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, and Joseph Morelli, Jr., District 17, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby honor Amy Castronova for her recognition as the 2013 Business Person of the Year and for her endless commitment to, their, to the success of others. Congratulations. Um, thank you. It's an honor um, to be here, to be recognized here, um, other than the occasional letter I get from the districts now and then. Um, it's actually really wonderful to um, come see everybody in person and, and meet those of you that I do not know. Um, the business has um, been in Irondequoit for the past 25 years, although I've only really led the company for the past 10. Um, so it's been um, a business that has, was founded in Rochester um, that I intend to, to keep in Rochester. Um, and certainly, as, as you mentioned, with the work I do with the Young Leaders Program, it's very important to me to give back to the uh, community. The things that I've learned about business at such a young age, um, I feel it's my duty to give that back to other um, emerging leaders, aspiring entrepreneurs, um, and students. So thank you once again, and thank you, legislators. <laughs> It's not usual that I get back up here and say something, but at this time, I would like to call Cheryl Rosby up to the podium. And how you doing, all right? I'm doing well. Good, good, good. Um, what do I say? This <laughs> is, you know, it's, uh, it's bittersweet to see you leave us. I know that you've gone on to uh, uh, greener pastures, and we wish you well. And what's everybody laughing about over there? It's a greener pastures, and they start laughing over there. No, Cheryl, you have um, been here for since 2002, and you have always been a person that has brought professionalism, uh, niceness, friendliness, openness to this to this office. And there's no wonder that you you got to stay here as long as you didn't. Someone else didn't recognize those talents and pick you up and take you someplace else. And I think they did. But I just want to say on behalf of myself and the entire Monroe County Legislature, we really are going to miss you. So, Jamie, you're going to do a great job. We know that. But, Cheryl, um, I always thought you and I would leave these chambers together. We didn't really, but we kind of we kind of did. And I'm, I'm so happy for you. So on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, I'd like to give you this plaque. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> said I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> I just want to say with all sincerity, <clears throat> thank you to the membership of this honorable body for over 12 years of service to you folks. Um, I am so honored and privileged and have, <clears throat> have been blessed to be a part of this legislature. Um, I have a passion for this office. I know that Jamie will do an outstanding job. And um, I really want to thank my team of David and Casey, who have had an unwavering commitment to the job of the legislature clerk's office, to both the Republican and Democratic staff offices. I thank you for your friendships and your patience with this office over the years. I appreciate it very much. To 28 years of county government service and to the administration, your friendships mean the world to me. 
uh, the, the transition between your departments and this office has been unbelievable. And lastly, but not last, to Jeff Adair for installing me as your clerk four years ago. I cannot tell you what that has meant to me. It's meant the world. Thank you. You have in your folders the approved minutes of the last cycle. There are no formal committee reports scheduled for this evening. At this time, we will now hold a public hearing. We have several, or public forum. We have several people registered to address the clerk, the legislature. Madam Clerk. If you require assistance, a deputy is available to assist you in approaching the lectern. I will call three people forward at one time. Each speaker will have two minutes in which to address the legislature and kindly conclude your remarks when the timer sounds and exit through the back of the chambers. We thank you for your cooperation. The first three speakers will be Jerry Ingram, Paul Forcella, and Mike Nicholson. Please state your name. Hello, I am Paul Fursella. The poor behavior of Monroe County government continues. The casino gambling that was approved last November will likely fail because gambling is never the answer to any problem. I wrote two letters to the Monroe County Executive's Office over a year ago and as of now, I have gotten no response at all. The scandal that affected Monroe County government that occurred a little over a month ago shows that this county is in poor shape. Equally poor is the so-called Attorney General investigation into that corruption because that investigation was done with Monroe County tax dollars and that shows that the investigation was biased. Monroe County, clean up your act right now. And voters, I encourage you to vote appropriately next November. The next three speakers are Robert Long, Sister Grace Miller, and Harry Murray. Good evening. I'm not a stranger in here, <clears throat> uh, so I will ask this. How many veterans do we have in here? Any Marines in here? Simplify. I wanted to say I'm not a stranger here. I know uh, Dr. Quattrotelli. I spent some time here as a chaplain because I've been 38 years in the uh, ministry as an American Baptist uh, clergy. I'm a decorated Marine out of Vietnam. And uh, what I have come up to understand is everybody says they want to help veterans. I have a company that did Y2K for this county. And the government has called me in because I have a master's in business. They've asked me to move forward on putting together companies so that we truly can re represent veterans so that we can come about and do projects. We need to hire veterans. What we do is, is bring in other veterans. We have training programs. And we'd like for this county to do a little better job of dealing with veterans. When we came home, there was no homecoming. I lost my dad there. My mom and dad saw three sons there, one in Big Red, one in First Cavalry. I just buried one with Agent Orange. 
The other one is also suffering the same fate. And what I'm saying is, I am a 100% service disabled vet whose company was totally hijacked. There's a total investigation. Whereas we lost $20 million in contracts. And the shameful part, first time in 35 years I didn't go in a voting booth because I was so disgusted on how we handle when somebody's ID theft. This book here has every bit of evidence that was presented. It went to the U.S. Attorney's Office, Louise Slaughter and Marie Burkle. This is what happened, and we'd like to, uh, for you to consider pulling out the team together. And if anybody needs anything else, we can provide it for you. Thank you very much. Article 17, Section 1 of the New York State Constitution says, and you've heard this before and I'm going to repeat it, the aid, care, and support of the needy are public concerns and shall be provided by the state and by such of its subdivisions. The subdivision here is you, Monroe County legislators. You are mandated by the state constitution to take care of the poor and needy in Monroe County. This includes the homeless of Monroe County, which includes the homeless at the Civic Center garage. You can't get out of this. You cannot say this does not concern you. And taking care of them does not mean throwing them out of the Civic Center garage, throwing them out in the cold, and not caring about what happens to them. You have a constitutional obligation, a constitutional mandate to provide a safe, warm home for them. You also have a Christian obligation to care for them. Matthew 25, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, homeless, and you welcomed me. You welcomed me. You didn't throw me out. I'm telling you, you cannot escape your responsibility of taking care of the homeless in the Civic Center garage. You have a constitutional and a biblical mandate. We understand the problems in the garage. What we are asking you to do is to work with the city in first, finding a building in the city for homeless who frequent the garage. Secondly, come up with the funds to pay for this building. We will not accept the constant response, there is no money. This county can come up with money for anything it wants. We see where the money is going. We see where it is mismanaged. In many cases, we see it going for entertainment of employees. We see it going to high paying salaries. Yet, the poor seem to be a problem to you. There's something wrong with this picture. We are demanding that you and the city make a building for the homeless in the Civic Center garage, for the homeless that are in the Civic Center garage, making this building a reality. Please you summarize. can do it if you want to. And we haven't forgotten the burial issue. Good evening. My name's Harry Murray. I'm the chair of the Department of Sociology and Anthropology at Nazareth College. And I have been a member of the St. Joseph's House of Hospitality community, uh, running the Saturday meal, and uh, too infrequently serving as a volunteer in the shelter for over 25 years. Um, I want to share a few reflections about the controversy about the Civic Center garage. Um, in the 25 years I've been here, I cannot tell you how many funerals I have gone to. Uh, with two minutes, I can't begin to list them. Um, all I can say is very rarely has it been the funeral of someone who died of old age. Um, 
people are dying on the streets for all kinds of reasons. The, I would also say that Monroe County uh, has done a pretty dismal job of fulfilling its responsibility of caring for the poor and homeless. Uh, I came here from Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse faced a similar situation to the crisis in the garage in 1979 when the Unity Kitchen Shelter closed and something like 60 homeless men were uh, put out on the streets. Within months, Onondaga County DSS came together with Catholic Charities and volunteers, opened a building on Oxford Street called the Oxford Street Inn. Um, I worked the first night there. We had four guests. Within a month, we had 50. Uh, the last I checked, its successor had over 130 sleeping there, um, pretty much anyone who wants to come. Um, in, in the quarter century that I've been here, Rochester has not had a shelter that takes anyone who, who needs shelter and has adequate space. I urge you, I, I say that the only difference is Onondaga County had leadership which had the will not only to talk but to act. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Mary Ella Belding, Ryan Acuff, and Rita Lewis. Good evening. My name is Mary Ellen Belding, and I'm here to provide some insight on the compliant practices for the minority women in business enterprise programs. I'm a lifelong resident of Monroe County, and I'm a legitimate, 100% owned, woman-owned, small business construction company. My career spans over 30 years in the commercial construction industry. In 2013, SRS created over 30 jobs in this community. 50% being minorities, women, city residents, and service-disabled veterans. We have the capabilities to perform general co construction work and subcontracting work. We are qualified as a county, city, state, and federal contractor and have successfully completed construction projects for these authorities. On behalf of myself and my employees, we ask the bureaucratic burdens associated with the waivers and 0% incentive-based contract awards policies that continue to prohibit our participation to qualified minority and women-owned businesses, affording us the opportunity to perform contracts on public works projects and provide jobs for the people in this community who deserve them. In 2010, New York State enacted legislation to strengthen the previously established Article 15A to promote women business enterprises by attempting to remove barriers and enc encouraging all of our participation in public work projects that are funded by our taxpayer dollars. As representatives of our community, we've entrusted every one of you, each and every one of you, to enforce and encourage the legislation that promotes equal opportunity and contracting for all businesses. In order to accomplish this, I request that the waivers afforded general contractors and contracts to eliminate and prohibit minority women in business participation on our taxpayer-funded projects be prohibited. With the volume of recent construction on our taxpayer-funded projects in this community, we are ready, willing, and able to perform quality construction work. However, we need your commitment each and every one of you to afford us the opportunity and enforce the laws and the compliance that is in place. We're a part of this community too. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening, members of the legislature. My name is Ryan Acuff. I'm from the House of Mercy. I believe we have an awesome task ahead of us 
And I think that task is to end street homelessness in Monroe County. I think in a county as wealthy as this one and as generous, um, I don't think it should be possible that anybody should be forced to live in a garage, under a bridge, on the railroad tracks, in the forest, but that's exactly what's happening. We do have a shelter system, we do have funds, but currently this, the current system is not providing for the homeless in Monroe County. For various reasons, certain shelters have certain restrictions, but also many nights when we call at the House of Mercy and other shelters can find that the shelters are full. As we know, um, there is an obligation for the Monroe County to provide that. I think the current crisis of the Civic Center garage, as tragic as it is, could lead us to come together to actually solve some of these problems swiftly and decisively, because I think that's what we need, because I think everybody deserves to live with dignity and respect. And solving the problem of street homelessness is something that could happen, just like Harry had talked about in Syracuse in 1979. The, the city, the county came together and they solved the issue. People didn't view an issue of left or right, Democrat or Republican. They saw an issue of right and wrong. And I think that's what this is, an issue of right and wrong and life and death. And I say life and death because it's not hypothetical. It's true that people die on the streets in Rochester every year of exposure. And if we let people be flushed out into the street that are struggling, homeless, many with mental illness and other issues, we're going to have a major, major issue. Possibly dozens of people, and, and I'll finish up, going f put out in the street potentially for death. I don't think that's what anybody in this county wants. We're gonna be meeting with certain officials from the county <laughs> and the city hopefully in the next couple weeks. But we're gonna need the support of the legislature as well as we take swift and decisive action to solve the problem of street homelessness, fund a building <laughs> in the way they did in Syracuse, <laughs> and what they did was a different funding model. They funded caseworkers to run a shelter. It was not funded per individual person, so people that don't fit into the system as well can still be treated with dignity and respect. Thank you so much. I am here tonight to request that everyone here do their part to provide for the homeless, especially the homeless who are in the garage. <laughs> do not put them out. Do not force them out until you have the right and suitable building for them. There is, <coughs> excuse me, it is possible to come up with a plan that will work. So please do this, do your part. Thank you. This concludes the public forum. At this time, we'll recess the January 14, 2014 <laughs> meeting of the Monroe County Legislature and convene the Pure Waters Administration Board for the Gates, Charlie, Ogden, Sewer District, the Irondequoit Bay South Central Pure Waters District, the Northwest Quadrant <laughs> Pure Waters District, and the Rochester Pure Waters District. If there are no objections, we will adopt 13-035 and 13-0353 with one vote. The clerk will see to it that the individual motions and resolution numbers are assigned for each district. The clerk will please note the attendance and read the first items on the agenda. PWEB agenda items 1357, referral 13-345. Moved by Legislator Daniele, the second by Legislator Yolovich. This is the motion to adopt. Is there any discussion? Mr. President, at this time I'd like to offer an amendment to item number 13-345. 0345, and our staff is currently passing that amendment out for review. Thank you. Yes. A 
motion to adopt his or to amend has been made. Is there a second to that? Second. Seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Thank you. Is the legislator's time to read it. Thank you. At this time, uh, through you, Mr. President, to the administration, uh, would somebody mind telling us the, explaining the amendment, just the removal of the, uh, these six uh, capital funds? Briefly. <coughs> uh, Mr. President, the removal of these particular cap funds uh, is, I'm sorry, capital funds is uh, necessary because these specific funds uh, reference county projects only. They are not Pure Waters projects. And it just is not in, uh, appropriate for the Pure Waters Administrative Board to be approving um, uh, expenses associated with county only capital projects. Board is yours. Uh, at this point, at this time, I ask for uh, a vote on the amendment. Is there any other questions or discussion? Legislator Andrews. Thank you, Mr. President. And through you um, to Mr. Franklin. So there's no other substantive change here, really, that we need to be aware of. <coughs> it's just correcting the capital accounts that are identified in the referral. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. President, that is uh, correct. It is simply a uh, issue of a cut and paste uh, error. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed? The amendment passes um, back to the main motion. Is there any discussion on the main motion? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The item carries. Next item. PWAB agenda items 2, 4, 6, and 9, referral 13-353. Moved by Legislator Daniele, it is seconded by Legislator Yolovich. This is the motion to adopt. Is there any, other, any discussion at this time? Legislator Haney. Thank you, Mr. President. The, um, just a couple of questions. Um, in going through the materials which were shared with us uh, yesterday afternoon, I noticed that <clears throat> almost exclusively the experience of the Loki Brill Consulting Group um, in this area was on behalf of surety companies who were trying to protect themselves when um, firms they had issued bonds for were defaulting or had defaulted. If, I mean, that's a, that's a particular angle in these situations. Is, is that experience considered appropriate in our situation where we will be an, an owner the chair, uh, Justin Roy with Environmental Services. Uh, yes, um, that experience is certainly relevant along with the uh, municipal and school district experience that Loki Brill has. Um, what Loki Brill's expertise is, is to bring in uh, the design consultant, the contractors involved, and then also representatives of the owner uh, to address these matters, um, come to uh, an amicable conclusion for all parties and, uh, and to uh, mitigate um, any potential for additional litigation. Thank you. The other thing I noticed is that both the submission of this firm's, uh, their response to the RFP and subsequent information contained numerous letters of recommendation. But the thing I noticed about the letters of recommendation is that with just one exception, they were all quite old. They all were dated um, in, 
in 2004, 2006, and 2008, which means they were all six, eight, ten years old. Um, usually when someone's submitting letters of recommendation, they're current or, or reasonably current. <coughs> doesn't it give you, my question is, doesn't it give you any concern that, the, that their letters of recommendation are so old? Through the chair, it doesn't present a concern. It, it certainly demonstrates a history of solid performance. Um, and there is, uh, the more, along with the more recent information as well as uh, services that Wilkieville has provided to the county previously. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. President, it may, it may demonstrate quality of service six, eight, and ten years ago, but I don't believe it demonstrates <coughs> quality of service in the last two, three, or four years. Mr. President, I'm going to vote in the negative on this and in the companion item, which is on the regular legislature agenda. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, this is a new service we're contracting for, which to my knowledge, the county has never engaged anybody to perform before. And I don't believe uh, that it has been adequately demonstrated to this legislature as to why we need to begin expending money um, on, uh, on this new service. Uh, secondly, I have significant concerns about the ability of, of the particular proposed, proposed contractor um, to deliver. Uh, as, as I mentioned, the letters of recommendation are all quite dated. Um, there's no evidence of, of the quality of their work in the last couple of years. And uh, there are lingering concerns, at least in my own mind, um, surrounding when Mr. Loki had a plumbing firm and uh, surrounding uh, some things that occurred concerning change orders on the major MCH rehab project back in the 1990s. And um, when the firm was, um, in effect, dismissed by the city it, during the re renovation and expansion of the War Memorial, the firm was dismissed in the middle of, of the project. So, Mr. <coughs> President, because I don't believe the need for the service has been documented, and because I have concerns about the particular vendor, I will be voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Seeing none, I'll move to a roll call vote. Mr. Tucciarello? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Ancello? Yes. Mr. Baroth? Yes. Ms. Boyce? Yes. Dr. Carbone? Yes. Mr. Colby? Mr. Daniele. Yes. Mr. Dan Delahanty? Yes. Mrs. Draw. Mr. Gamble? Yes. Mr. Gamina. Mr. Haney? Yes. Mr. Howland. Yes. Ms. Cayley? Yes. Mr. John Lightfoot. Yes. Mr. Willie Lightfoot. Yes. Mr. Marionetti? Yes. Mr. Michike. Mr. Morelli? Yes. Dr. Quattro? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Mrs. Valerio? Oh, ex is excused. Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Mr. Yolovich? Yes. President Adair? Yes. 19 8, motion passes. Next item, please. PUAB agenda item 8, referral 13-347. Mr. 
Moved by Legislator Danielle, it is second by Legislator Yolovich. This is the motion to adopt. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. We will now recess the Gates Charlie Ogden Sewer District, the Irondequoit Bay South Central Pure Waters District, the Northwest Quadrant Pure Waters District, and the Rochester Pure Waters District, and adjourn the Pure Waters Administration Board. The January 14, 2014 meeting of the legislature is now reconvened. We will, we will now proceed with considerations of motions, resolutions, and notices. The clerk will read the next item on the agenda. Mr. President. Yes. I rise to uh, move to suspend the rules to reconsider item number 13-0358-BR, the capital 2014 budget. It is moved by Legislators Tucherall, it is seconded by Legislators Lightfoot and Legislators Quattro. This is to suspend the rules. We'll move to a roll call vote. Mr. Tucherello. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mr. Ancello. Mr. Baroth, yes. Ms. Boyce, yes. Dr. Carbone, yes. Mr. Colby, yes. Mr. Daniele, yes. Mr. Delahanty, yes. Mrs. Draw, yes. Mr. Gamble, yes. Mr. Gamina, yes. Mr. Haney, yes. Mr. Howland, yes. Ms. Cayley, yes. Mr. John Lightfoot, yes. Mr. Willie Lightfoot, Mr. Marionetti, yes. Mr. Michike, yes. Mr. Morelli, yes. Dr. Quattro, yes. Ms. Rivera, yes. Mr. Rocco, yes. Ms. Taylor, yes. Mrs. Valerio is excused, Mr. Wilcox, yes. Mr. Yolovich, yes. President Adair. Yes. Motion passes 27-0. Now on to the motion to debate and discuss the 2014 capital budget. Is there any discussion at this time? Legislator Haney. Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinarily, as those who've been here for a while know, at this juncture, I would always rise to move to sever uh, some items. Uh, I will not do so tonight as I don't wish to unnecessarily prolong the proceedings because we all know that my motion to sever would be defeated. I am, however, going to vote against the main motion, beca not because of any of the reasons that have circulated in the tempest in the teapot in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Um, but because I think and sincerely believe it is very improper that we are forced to vote on all of these resolutions, and each of one of them is a separate uh, bond resolution, but that we are forced to vote on all of them uh, with, with just one vote. Uh, the explanation that's always been given for that, Mr. President, is that it's the adoption of the capital budget. I frankly don't believe that that is, is the case, and I'd cite two or three reasons. One, I believe the capital budget was adopted at our regular meeting in uh, December. The capital budget is a page in the budget book, and it's long been the established practice of this body that when we vote on and adopt the annual budget with any amendments to items in the book that the legislature may deem appropriate, that once we vote on that um, ad to adopt that budget, that we have adopted everything that's in the book. I mean, that applies to the procurement policy in the front of the book and applies to all the pay schedules in the back of the book it applies to the tables of uh, uh, positions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that I believe that the capital budget, which is a page in that book, has in fact already been adopted. But secondly, and perhaps more importantly, Mr. President, 
the bundle of items that we're being asked, being forced to adopt by one vote here tonight, does not conform to the capital budget as laid out on that page or two pages in the budget book. This, uh, and I don't have my sp specific numbers here right now, but the number of bond <coughs> resolutions that we're being asked to adopt is something like 52, whereas the number of projects in the capital budget in the budget book is 66. Uh, so that it, it, we are not adapting the capital budget as laid out in the budget book. Now, the, most of the items that constitute the difference are pure waters projects. And because of requirements of state law, uh, the adoption of the financing resolutions for pure waters projects um, is always delayed in, in this honor, honor, honorable body. But there are other exclusions also. And there's a couple of additions. So that this is not, this bundle of resolutions <coughs> that we are being forced to adopt as one unitary action um, does not conform to the capital budget that's in the budget book. And because we, the members of this body, because I, as a member of this body, am denied the right to represent my constituents and vote individually on the individual bond resolutions, I'm going to vote collective in the negative collectively on the whole batch of them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Seeing none, I'll move to a roll call vote. Mr. Tucciarello. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Mr. Ancello. Yes. Mr. Baroth. Yes. Ms. Boyce. Yes. Dr. Carbone. Yes. Mr. Colby. Yes. Mr. Danielli. Yes. Mr. Delahanty. Yes. Mrs. Draw. Yes. Mr. Gamble. Yes. Mr. Gamina. Mr. Haney? Yes. Mr. Howland? Yes. Ms. Cayley? Yes. Mr. John Lightfoot? Yes. Mr. Willie Lightfoot? Yes. Mr. Marionetti? Yes. Mr. Michike? Yes. Mr. Morelli? Yes. Dr. Quattro? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Mrs. Valerio is excused. Mr. Wilcox? Mr. Yolovich? Yes. President Adair? Yes. 26 to 1, budget passes. <clears throat> Next item. Yes. To move uh, to list item number 13-0371-BR, the amendment adding the Children's Detention Center to the 2014 capital budget from the table. Do I have a second? Second by Legislator Tucherell. This is a vote on a lifting motion. So is there, um, is there any discussion or debate at this time? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The item carries. Next item. Did we lift it from the table? I'm sorry, that's my, my mistake. This cold got me down. I'm sorry, that was just a lift from the table. I got a little ahead of myself there. All righty. So we've lifted it from the table as we have now a move to debate and discussion on it. Is there any dis debate or discussion on it? None? All set? Okay. Hang on. Legislator Baroth, the floor is yours if you want it. 
I just wish to say this, I'm, I'm glad we were able to list this on the table right now and, we, and that we were voting to, uh, to add it to the uh, capital improvement plan. Um, frankly, I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't, and I'm glad we're moving forward at this point in time. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The item carries. Thank you for your patience with me. On to item number one. Item number one, referral 13-334, accepting. Second. Moved by legislator Mitch K, second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The item carries. Next item. Item number two, referral 13-335, accept. Moved by legislator Mitch K, second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number three, referral 13-336, accept. Moved by legislator Mitch K, second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number four, referral 13-337. Moved by legislators Mitchell K and Boyce, seconded by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number five, referral 13-338. Moved by legislator Mitchell K, seconded by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number six, referral 13-339. Moved by legislator Draw, second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number seven, referral 13-340. Moved by legislator Yolovich. Is it second, or moved by legislator Draw, is second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number eight, referral 13-341. Moved by legislator Boyce, seconded by legislators Draw and Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number nine, referral 13-342, authorizing contract. <clears throat> Moved by Legislator Daniele, seconded by Legislators Draw and Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 10, referral 13-343. Moved by Legislator Daniele, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 11, referral 13-344. <clears throat> Moved by Legislator Daniele, it is seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 12, referral 13-346. Moved by Legislator Daniele, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 13, referral 13-348. Moved by, the leg moved by the Honorable Legislator Robert Colby, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 14, referral 13-349. It is moved by Legislator Boyce. It is second by Legislator Colby and second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 15, referral 13-350. It is moved by Legislator Boyce. It is seconded by Legislator Tucciarello. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 16, referral 13-351. <clears throat> it is moved by Legislator Mitchell Kate. It is seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 17, referral 13-352. Moved by Legislator Daniele, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. I'm 
sorry, what did I do? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's move to a roll call then. I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Tucciarello. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mr. Ancello. Yes. Mr. Baroth. Ms. Boyce. Dr. Carbone. Mr. Colby. Mr. Daniele. Mr. Delahanty. Mrs. Draw. Mr. Gamble. Mr. Gamina. Mr. Haney. Mr. Howland. Ms. Cayley. Mr. John Lightfoot. Mr. Willie Lightfoot. Mr. Marionetti. Mr. Michike. Mr. Morelli. Dr. Quattro. Ms. Rivera. Mr. Rocco. Ms. Taylor. Mrs. Valerio is excused. Mr. Wilcox. Mr. Yolovich. Yes. President Adair. Yes. 19-8, motion passes. Thank you. It passes next item. Item <coughs> number 18, referral 13-354. It is moved by legislator draw, second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 19, referral 13-355. It is moved by legislator Mitch K, is second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the item carries. Next item. Item number 20, referral 13-366. It is moved by legislator Holland. It is second by legislator Rocco. Is there any discussion at this time? Legislator Andrews. Thank you, Mr. President. We're on number 20, correct? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Um, just a couple of questions here with, with the recommendations for the appointments to the Water Authority. Um, you're forwarding two names to us this evening. Am I correct that this would this make the Water Authority board full? Or are there pending vacancies after these two? These are yes. Yeah. This is it? Mm -hmm. um, could I ask you, sir, please, what their party affiliations are? Yes, uh, Mr. Bernstein is um, a Republican and Mr. Maska is a um, conservative. Thank you. And do you know what the political affiliation is for the current board members? I do not off the top of my head. Maybe someone here does. I don't know it off the top of my head. <coughs> I didn't use that as a consideration when I interviewed the three people I interviewed. No, I'm just asking because of the requirement that we not have, that only five can be from one political party. So I'm assuming that there are five, there, there will be five Republicans, so there must be four currently on the board and perhaps the others conservative, but I don't know. It's just, I, if somebody here can <coughs> just assure us that we'll be meeting that Not minimal sure. requirement of the law, please. Thank you. Uh, through the president, uh, there will be compliance with that provision. Thank you. And then through the president, then perhaps Mr. Golos, do you know the political affiliation of the other members that are currently serving on the Water Authority Board? Through the president, um, I believe if, if this uh, vote goes through, there will be uh, four Republicans and three conservatives. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess my only question, my last remaining question is, this has obviously been an issue this chamber has talked about for a long time, as has the community. Um, the lack of actual bipartisan representation on that board, including Democrats. Obviously, I understand that there are conservatives on the board. Um, <coughs> at one point in time, I think it was in 2008, there was a grand jury recommendation that came out that suggested there be members appointed to the board that serve, that represented the, the actual minority parties sitting here, the Democratic Party on that board. Could I just ask um, why um, that recommendation wasn't followed? Yeah, I um, actually, it was, you know, it was my appointments I interviewed, I interviewed um, Mr. Bernstein, Mr. Nask, and one other individual um, whose party affiliation was of, um, was a Democrat, and the two people that I chose um, both had unique skill sets that are going to complement the water authority very well. I also encouraged the person that I did not choose to please resubmit their name for the next, the next time a, a, a position opens up. But these two clearly came through. It's very, uh, very good fit for that board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for going through that application interview process to make your recommendations. Um, it, would, it would be my preference to see members from the, this minority party serving on that board. Um, <coughs> that would 
open it up and perhaps make it feel more inclusive and transparent as it currently operates. I serve as a legislative liaison. Um, doesn't obviously privy me to anything that happens in executive session or give me a vote on that board, nor does it give anybody representing this party um, a vote on that board on those issues that come up there. So this evening, and respectfully, I'll be voting against um, the two gentlemen that you've recommended. Um, again, I hope in, in the future at the next vacancy you would consider a member from the Democratic Party. Yes, Thank I you. will. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Seeing none, I'll move to a roll call vote. Mr. Tuturello. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mr. Ancello. Yes. Mr. Baroth. Yes. Ms. Boyce. Yes. Dr. Carbone. Yes. Mr. Colby. Yes. Mr. Danielli. Yes. Mr. Delahanty. Yes. Mrs. Draw. Yes. Mr. Gamble. Yes. Mr. Gamina. Yes. Mr. Haney. Yes. Mr. Howland. Yes. Ms. Cayley. Mr. John Lightfoot. Yes. Mr. Willie Lightfoot. Yes. Mr. Marionetti. Yes. Mr. Michike. Yes. Mr. Morelli. Yes. Dr. Quattro. Yes. Ms. Rivera. Yes. Mr. Rocco. Yes. Ms. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Valerio is excused. Mr. Wilcox. Mr. Yolovich, yes. President Adair. Yes. 18-9 referral passes. Thank you. There being no unfinished business tonight, Legislator Tuturello. I'm Tuesday, February 11th, 2014. Thank you all. Thank you for putting.